Let's go ahead and take a look at some derivatives of a logarithmic functions. I don't know what could be more entertaining than that. Remember that when we had a situation like y equals, say, 2 to the x, that the derivative of y, y prime, was the same thing times the natural log of the base, in this case, 2. And that's going to be true for any positive number a. y equals a to the x, the derivative is going to be a to the x times the natural log of 2. All right, so let's remember that, and let's go ahead and let y equal the natural, not the natural, let's make it the log, base 2 of x. Now, what does this mean? Well, this means that, remember that y is the exponent on 2 to get x. In other words, x is equal to 2 to the y. Well, we can use different, we can use uh, implicit differentiation now to find dy dx of this equation right here, where y, we're, remember, we're thinking of as a function of x. So the derivative of x with respect to x is just 1, because again, we have a coefficient of 1 on x. On the right side, we have, let's see, the derivative of 2 to the y. Well, we're going to use the same rule. 2 to the x is going to be, well, it was 2 to the x the natural log of 2 when y was 2 to the x, but here now we have y as a function of x. So we're using implicit differentiation. So it's going to be 2 to the y times the natural log of 2 times the derivative of the exponent, dy dx, the derivative of y. All right, so what does that mean then? If we solve for dy dx, we see that it's equal to 1 over 2 to the y times the natural log of 2. And I'll go ahead and write it the way, well, you can see that uh, it's just going to be, it's going to be then uh, dy dx is equal to 1 over 2 to the y. What is y? y is a log base 2 of x. Well, if I raise 2 to the log base 2 of x, those things cancel each other out. And I'm left with dy dx is equal 1 over x times a natural log of 2. 1 over x times a natural log of 2. And so from that, we can generalize for any base a that if y is equal to the log base a of x, then uh, dy dx, or y prime, make sure you're using notation, is equal to, uh, well, it's just going to be 1 over x times the natural log of a. And that's always going to be the case. Now, we do have, of course, a special case, and that is when we have the natural log. If y is equal to the natural log of x, then dy dx, the derivative, is going to be 1 over x times, well, this is base e, the natural log of e. Well, the natural log of e is 1. The exponent on e to get e to the first is 1, so we just get 1 over x. So what you're going to remember that, now that we have this all justified, you'll just remember that if y is equal to the natural log of x, that dy dx, or y prime, is just 1 over x. And that's the one that you're going to use most often, because usually the functions that will come up with logarithms are going to be the natural log, so it's just going to be 1 over x. Now we'll look at lots of examples of how to use these especially with the chain rule. Uh, but I want to look at the next concept of logarithmic differentiation first. And so what this says is that, believe it or not, it may be easier to take some derivatives if you take the natural log of both sides. I know it's hard to believe, but it is going to be true. And uh, let's look at the steps in logarithmic differentiation. On page uh, 243, there's three steps there. The first one says that we will take natural logs, natural logs of both sides and we'll, of the equation y equals f of x. So we want to be able to write y completely as a function of x in order to be able to use logarithmic differentiation and use the laws of logarithms to simplify. Number two, the second statement is we want to differentiate implicitly with respect to x. So we're going to use implicit differentiation uh, to take the derivative with respect to x. And then the third thing we're going to do is just uh, solve for y prime. So solve for dy dx or the derivative y prime, and then you'll have to do a substitution, most likely, uh, back in for y, what it is in terms of f of x. Let's take a look at an example here. That's the only way we can learn this uh, logarithmic differentiation. It's going to be one of those things, again, that you're just going to want to practice more and more. And the more you practice, the more you'll be able to, uh, to get good at it. Let's see. Let's try number, uh, well, how about, let's try number 27. Seems like a good one. It's one similar to your homework problems. We have y is equal to uh, 2x plus 1 to the fifth, so the quantity of 2x plus 1 to the fifth times the quantity of x to the fourth minus 3 to the sixth. Now, without logarithmic differentiation, this wouldn't be too bad of a derivative to take. You could just use the product rule here. First times the derivative of second plus second times the derivative of first. But let's go ahead and use logarith logarithmic differentiation. Um, not necessarily because it's going to make it easier, but because they tell us to. That's a pretty good reason. 
All right, so um, what we're going to do is we're going to take natural log of both sides. So I have the natural log of y on the left, and the natural log of all this, 2x plus 1 to the 5th times x to the 4th minus 3 to the 6th. Now we're going to use our laws o logarithms. On the right side, the log of a product, we can write as a sum of those logs. So we can write the log of 2x plus 1 to the 5th plus the log of x to the fourth minus three to the sixth. When I say log, of course, I mean natural log. You got to keep the base the same throughout here. And um, so now let's keep simplifying. Uh, remember the rule of logs is you can bring the exponent down in front. So we have five times the natural log of two x plus one plus six times the natural log of x to the fourth minus three. Okay, now I think we are in business. Now we're ready to do, do implicit differentiation with respect to x. So on the left side we have the derivative of the natural log of something is 1 over that thing times the derivative of what's inside here with implicit differentiation y is a function of x we have dy dx there. On the right side we have 5 that's a constant so that comes down times the derivative of the log of something is 1 over that thing times the derivative of what's inside. What's the derivative of 2x plus 1? Yeah, it's just the slope of that line too. Plus 6 that's a constant it comes down in front times the derivative of the log of anything is 1 over that thing, the natural log, times the derivative of what's inside. Well, what's the derivative of x to the fourth minus 3? That's right, 4x to the third. So let's simplify this a little bit. We have 1 over y dy dx is equal to 5 times 2, that's 10, over 2x plus 1, plus 6 times 4 is 24x to the third, over x to the fourth minus 3. Now, Last thing we want to do is solve for y prime or dy dx. And so y prime, which is the same again as dy dx, well, we have to multiply both sides of our equation by y, right? In order to clear out the y from this denominator. So y prime, dy dx, is equal to y times 10 over 2x plus 1 plus 24x cubed over x to the fourth minus 3. x to the fourth minus 3. This is a mess here. x cubed, x to the fourth minus 3. There we go. Last thing we want to do is substitute back in for y what it's equal to. What was y equal to? Well, it was equal to all this right here. So we're going to put that in there. And y prime then is equal to y, which is 2x plus 1 to the fifth uh, times x to the fourth minus 3 to the sixth. That's right, that's right, times then all of this, 10 over 2x plus 1, plus 24x to the third over x to the fourth minus 3. So again, what we did is we said, here's what y is equal to, it's equal to all this, so we substituted it back in. So now I have y prime, which again is the same as dy dx, completely in terms of x. So there's a good example of logarithmic differentiation. All right, you should look at the last section in this book, uh, the last section in this section, the last topic in this section, the number e as a limit, and uh, look over that. Uh, we're not going to deal with it directly here, but it will come up um, in later sections of calculus. Right now I'm going to jump right into examples. We might be able to get everything into one video for this section. Wouldn't that be cool? Let's try some derivatives here. Let's look at number, um, oh, let's see, how about number three? We'll look at three and four just because it's a good contrast. We have f of theta, so f of theta in number 3. And you see we get the natural log of the cosine of theta. Now we're looking for the derivative here. And so we want f prime of theta. That's the right notation. Remember the natural log of anything, the derivative is 1 over that thing. So it's 1 over the cosine times the derivative of what's inside. Remember that the derivative of cosine is negative sine. So that's the negative sine of theta over the cosine of theta which of course is the negative tangent of theta. Now compare that to number four where we have that f of theta is equal to the cosine of the natural log of x. We don't have f of theta, that doesn't make any sense. There's no thetas to be found. We have f of x is a cosine of the natural log of x. Now here we want f prime of x. Well the cosine of something, the derivative of the cosine of something is the negative sine of that same thing. Now we're going to multiply that times the derivative of what's inside the derivative of the natural log of x is 1 over x. So we have the negative sine of the natural log of x all over x. Now notice the two differences here. We just switched the functions. Instead of the natural log of the cosine, we took the cosine of the natural log. We have 
two very different derivatives of those two functions. All right, let's try another example here. Let's, um, oh, I don't know, let's jump ahead to number 14. Let's see what we can do with that one. 14, we have that y is equal to the natural log of x to the fourth times the sine squared of x. So we're just going to follow our rules here. Uh, we're looking for y prime or dy dx. And the derivative of the natural log of anything is 1 over that thing. So we have x to the fourth times the sine squared of x. All right, now we're going to take that times the derivative of the inside function. The inside function is x to the fourth sine squared of x. Well, inside that, that inside function, we have to actually use the product rule here. So we're going to have the first, x to the fourth, times the derivative of the second. Well, sine squared of x, remember that's the same as sine of x quantity squared. So the derivative of that is going to be 2 sine of x to the first power times the derivative of what's inside here, which is the cosine of x. So there's the first times the derivative of the second. So while we're doing the product rule, we had to use the chain rule, plus the second sine squared times the derivative of the first. So that's 4x to the third is the derivative of the first times the second left alone. And there is our derivative. So we'll just leave it like that. Don't worry about simplifying these derivatives. Um, 1 over that quantity. So we just use the rule for logs. 1 over the quantity times the derivative of what's inside. While we were taking the derivative of the inside function, we did first times the derivative of the second. Derivative of sine squared, we had to use the chain rule. 2 sine x times the derivative of the inside, which is cosine x, plus second left alone, sine squared x times the derivative of the first, 4x cubed. Just practice is what it takes. Just a lot of practice, and you'll get the hang of these derivatives. Okay, let's go ahead and try another one, or at least set up another one. I want to look at number 16, where we have, uh, let's go ahead and start a new page here. We have the function capital G, and our independent variable is u, and it says to take the natural log of the positive square root of 3u plus 2 over 3u minus 2. Remember that logarithms in general have a domain that is from 0 to infinity. You can't put a 0 or a negative into a logarithm, natural log or in any log, any base log. So keep that in mind if we're going through these problems. Usually you don't have to worry about that when you're taking derivatives. I do want to rewrite this, and usually when you're taking derivatives, you want to rewrite your radicals, dude, as exponents. So I'm going to write this as the log of something to the one half. Now, I'm going to use the property of logarithms here to say that g of u is the same as one half times the natural log of 3u plus 2 divided by 3u minus 2. All right, now it's going to be a little bit easier to take this derivative. So g prime of u, that's the correct notation for the derivative, is equal to one half times the derivative of the natural log. Well, the derivative of the natural log is of something is one over that thing. So it's going to be one over 3u plus 2 over 3u minus 2 times the derivative of what's inside. Now when I take the derivative of what's inside, this inside function right here, I'm going to have to use the quotient rule. The quotient rule says we take the bottom times the derivative of the top. The derivative of the top is 3. Minus the top times the derivative of the bottom. The derivative of the bottom is 3. Just linear functions there. All over the bottom squared. Alright, so we can simplify this a little bit. We have 1 half times 1 over a fraction. We can flip that up and just put 3u minus 2 over 3u plus 2. All that times, let's see, we have uh, 9u minus 6 minus uh, the quantity of 9u plus 6 all over the quantity of 3u minus 2 squared. And we'll keep going a little bit here. 1 half times the quantity 3u minus 2 over 3u plus 2. Let's see, 9u minus a 9u, that's going to take care of those when I distribute that negative through. And negative 6 minus another 6 will give me a negative 12 over 3u minus 2, that quantity squared. Uh, we can cancel the negative 12 with the 2, and let's do that. So we'll have a negative 6 times 3u minus 2, all that divided by 3u plus 2 times the quantity 3u minus 2 squared. And there is your derivative. All right, so again, got a little messy there, but you just got to follow your rules and trust it. And uh, things work out with a lot of practice. Okay, I think we are going to need one more video here, so we'll do a few more examples in the next video. We'll see you then.